This video is best viewed on a full screen at 1080p quality. Click the gear at the lower right corner of the video window. Next, click the quality option. And finally, select 1080p. I'm projecting all of the images in a dimly lit room rather than a dark room. For this I'm using two shaded lamps placed about 12 feet diagonally from the center of the screen and each lamp has a small 15 watt chandelier bulb in it. The ambient light in the room measures 4 lumen at the center of the screen. So the two most important factors in your home theater are obviously the projector and the screen and that's why I want to quickly mention the type of screen I'm projecting onto. In this case, it's a spandex projector screen instead of the more typical blackout material. There are several advantages to this type of screen, uh, one of which it can attach to a $30 backdrop stand. Uh, it's easy to do. You just take some five spring clips and you attach the screen to the backdrop stand. And this can be used outdoors in your backyard or take it with you camping or to a party. And the screen I have here is made in the USA by Stretch Screen USA. It's available on Amazon for around $80, which is actually less than a do-it-yourself uh, fixed-frame type screen. Uh, you don't have to buy wood, corner brackets, staples, and actually build the frame as you do with that type of frame. The other advantage uh, is that you don't need a permanent empty wall space. For example, the situation I have here is a little awkward to put up a fixed-frame screen because I have a staircase in the way. But with the spandex projector screen, that's not a problem. It literally only takes 30 seconds to put up this screen. Right here, we're all halfway done already. It just simply attaches to five small hooks that are uh, in the ceiling, and you can barely see them. And the corner brackets, the, the bottom corners, attach with a bungee to something as simple as a water jug or whatever you want to uh, use for that. And there you have it. The screen is completely up. So here you can see the spandex projector screen produces a really good image, but that's only half the story. Check this out. If we pick up our camera and walk around behind the screen, you can see that the spandex projector screen can also act as a backlight screen. That's like getting two screens in one. No other type of projector screen can do this. Now, buyer beware, you may be tempted to go with a cheaper knockoff version from China, but go with the one made in the USA. It's Amazon's choice, even at a higher price, and it has 147 reviews so far, where the cheap one only has three reviews, which can easily be faked. So here's the Amazon product page of the spandex projector screen that I have, and they have images along the left. As you can see, the, it's a much cleaner design instead of sewn crooked and all that. And the fabric is a much higher quality. It's a tighter weave, which will give you better colors and a sharper image. And here is a real-world example of that. I have the two screens hung side by side with the Made in the USA one on the left and the Chinese knockoff version on the right. And you can really see the difference in the color quality, the brightness, the saturation. And if you look at this next image here, you can actually see how much detail you lose in the smoke due to the uh, looser weave of the cheaper fabric. Here's the product page one more time, and I put a link in the description to make it easy for you. All right, let's get going. Compare our projectors. Here you can see the size comparison between the DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed brightness of 1800 lumen and a resolution of 800 by 480 and the Regu Z720 budget projector with a claimed brightness of 3200 lumen and a higher 1280 by 800 resolution. Our first comparison is a simple white image to compare the brightness. As you can see, the 3200 lumen Regu Z720 is only slightly brighter than the 1800 lumen DB Power T20. And let's zoom in to compare the pixels. Here we have some basic colored squares, and the DB Power T20 has a stronger blue color. And this one you might want to pause on. This is the actual lumen measurement of each colored square. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room like all our other slides were shot in. And here we're zooming in to compare the color pixels. Here's a basic color gradient. And the Regu Z720 has some faded blue tones. And here's a more advanced color gradient. 
Uh, neither projector has sm very smooth transitions between the colors. You'll notice the DB Power T20 has a uh, better shadow a transition. Here's some colored smoke on a white background, and there's very different uh, detail reproduction here. And we'll zoom in, remembering the Regu has quite a bit higher resolution, but it didn't reproduce the green details too well. Here's the colored smoke on a black background. Uh, the DB Power T20 has stronger blue colors. And let's zoom on in this one to compare the details. Here's a basic highlight and shadow gradient. The DB Power has uh, better highlights, but the Regu has better shadows. And zooming in, we can see the Regu is crisper. Here we'll compare the shadow details of this image. The Regu uh, projector has much better shadow details. It's brighter overall. And zooming in, we can compare the details here. Here we'll look at the highlights. And the Regu is brighter with finer details due to its higher resolution. And here's a good shadowy image. Uh, the Regu projector has much better shadow details and a brighter overall image. And we can zoom in to see the higher resolution here. Here we'll check the highlight areas and shadow areas in one image. The Regu has better shadow details. Here we'll test the resolution with some grid patterns. The Regu, its higher resolution, reproduces the grid pattern more accurately. And zooming in, we can see the DB Power T20, some of the lines almost fade away. Here's a similar grid pattern. And the DB Power projector slightly enlarges and crops the edges of the image. Zooming in, we can compare the details. Here's some black grids on a white background. Uh, the Regu, the higher resolution, reproduces the grid pattern more accurately. And we'll zoom in to compare the resolution here. And opposite is some white grids on a black background. The Regu, once again, its higher resolution reproduces a more accurate grid pattern. And we'll zoom in on this one. Here we'll compare text. Uh, the Regu, just because it has a higher resolution, produces sharper text. And when we zoom in, you can see the clear difference here. Here we'll compare skin tones. Uh, the Regu faces are clear, but they're a little bit too pale. They look washed out. And zooming in, we can compare that more closely. Here's another series of faces. And once again, the Regu faces look pale and could use more color. And we'll zoom in to see that more closely. They're much crisper, though. Here we'll do a color comparison. Uh, the Regu is brighter and sharper. And we can zoom in to compare the details here. Here's a similar image for comparison. And the Regu, some of the colors are much brighter, but they seem to be not as saturated. Here's a lower contrast image with some fog. The Regu, once again, looks a little bit washed out and could use more contrast. Here we'll do a color comparison. Uh, notice the lighter yellows and brighter shadows of the Regu Z720. Here we'll check the sky, and Regu is sharper with better shadow details. And we'll zoom in to compare the details here. Here's a high contrast image, and the Regu is a brighter image but seems a little bit washed out as some of our other images did. And we'll zoom in to compare that here. Here we'll compare the contrast with this image. Uh, the Regu, simply because it's brighter, has better contrast. But the DB Power T20 looks uh, good as well. But when we zoom in, we see the lower resolution of the T20 uh, doesn't match up. Here we have a dimly lit scene, and the Regu projector has much better shadow details. And next we'll zoom in on the pyramid to see the higher resolution of the Regu produces a sharper image.
Here's a sunset scene for comparison. The ray goo produces a much brighter image. And the bridge at night lit up. The ray goo, it might be a little too bright. Uh, if you look at the sky, it looks a little bit too blue for a nighttime sky. And zooming in, though, we can see the ray goo has much better details on the bridge. Here's another night shot. And the ray goo is much better with uh, better fine details. And when we zoom in on the background, we can look at the fence so you can barely see it from the DB Power T20 projector. Here's a train with some green paint. The ray goo projector has sharper details and better shadows, but you lose some of the uh, texture in the green there. When we zoom in, you can see that. Here's a balloon in a dark sky. The ray goo is much brighter overall. And some fireworks in a dark sky. Uh, the higher resolution of the Regu projector maintains better fine line details. And our final image, a night scene with some stars. Uh, the Regu Z720 has uh, better shadow details and sharper stars. Zooming in, we can see the clear difference here. Next, we'll compare the DB Power T20 budget projector to a full-size name brand BenQ projector that's rated at 2000 lumen. You'll learn in some of my other reviews that the name brand 2000 lumen projectors are actually many times brighter than the so-called 2000 lumen budget projectors that sell on Amazon for under $150. Here's a quick brightness comparison between the sub $100 DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed rating of 1800 lumen and the name brand BenQ projector rated at 2000 lumen. From this picture, it's clear that the claims of cheap knockoffs are not always true. I think you'd agree the BenQ projector on the right is much more than 10% brighter than the budget projector on the left. The same holds true for the quality of your projector screen. Here's a quick comparison between a cheap $30 spandex projector screen made in China on the right and an $80 spandex projector screen made in the USA on the left. As you can see, it's worth spending a bit more for the higher quality image you'll get. With that being said, you will remember from the beginning of this video I showed you that I was projecting these images onto a white spandex projector screen. However, if you want to use your projector in a room that's not totally dark, or if you want to use it outside, like in your backyard for an outdoor movie, or take a camping, or to a party or something, there are two things you may want to consider. A brighter projector and the darker silver spandex projector screen. Even though the silver screen looks quite a bit darker than the white screen, it'll actually give you a nice bright image with more contrast, which is especially useful when you can't get an environment that's completely dark, such as being outside with a full moon or if there's streetlights nearby. Now the other benefit of the darker silver spandex screen is that you won't have to wash it as often if you accidentally drop it on the ground because you won't notice dirt as much on the darker fabric. But keep in mind, if the spandex screen does get dirty, you can just throw it in the washer using cool water and then dry it for 10 to 15 minutes in the dryer and it's good as new. That's not as easy with some other types of projector screens. And finally, you'll remember when I showed you the rear projection ability of the white spandex projector screen, well, the silver screen has that same ability. Okay, let's continue with our BenQ comparison. Here you can see the size comparison between the DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed brightness of 1800 lumen and a resolution of 800 by 480 and the full size name brand BenQ W1070 projector with a brightness of 2000 lumen and a higher 1920 by 1080 resolution. Our first comparison here is a simple white image to compare the brightness. As you can see, the so-called 1800 lumen DB Power T20 budget projector is nowhere near as bright as the 2000 lumen name brand BenQ projector. And now let's zoom in to compare the pixels. And next we have some basic colored squares with the BenQ being much brighter. And you may want to pause on this image. This is the actual lumen measurement of each color. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room like all our other slides were shot in. And we'll zoom in to compare the color pixels. Next we'll compare some basic color gradients. You'll notice the BenQ, the transition between the colors is much smoother. 
And here we have some colored smoke on the white background. Zooming in, we can see much more detail from the higher resolution BenQ. And smoke on a black background. Zooming in on this one, you can see the drastic difference in details. Here's a basic color gradient. And zooming in, we'll compare the detail here. Here you can see the shadow details are much better from the BenQ projector and the highlights are better as well. Here the shadow details once again are better from the BenQ and zooming in you can see the drastic difference there. And here you see better shadows and highlights uh, in this image from the BenQ. Here's a gradient, a much better resolution from the BenQ projector and zooming in you can see the big difference there. Here's another grid pattern. BenQ looks much better once again. And zooming in, you can see the big difference. Here's uh, some black grids on a white background. Uh, zooming in, we can see the grid pattern is much better from the BenQ. And a white grid on a black background. Zooming in, we'll see the same difference in quality here. Here the text is much uh, more legible from the BenQ projector. Zooming in, you can see the difference. And the skin tones are brighter and better from the BenQ. We can see the detail, the faces are sharper as well. Here's another comparison of faces for skin tone, and we'll zoom in on this one. And the colors are much uh, brighter from the BenQ projector and the details are better as well. Here's a similar image for comparison. Here you really see the brightness difference between the two projectors. And here again the brightness is much brighter from the BenQ. And once again the details are much better from the BenQ as well as we zoom in to see that. Here's a nice high contrast image. And zooming in, you can see the difference in quality. Here you can see how much more contrast the BenQ has. And zooming in, it's uh, sharper as well. Here we can see m much better shadow details from the BenQ. And look at the pyramid, how much uh, sharper it is. Here's a good sunset scene for comparison. And a night shot. Zooming in, uh, notice the detail on the bridge. And notice the fence in the background, how much more detail you pick up from the BenQ projector. And when we zoom in on this image, you will see how much uh, sharper the higher resolution BenQ is. Here's a nice uh, night shot of a balloon. And some fireworks, the fine line details are much better from the BenQ. And our final image, uh, compare the stars in the sky. Zooming in, you can see the big difference there. So my final advice is as follows. If you're always going to be using your projector in a totally dark room, then the brightness isn't as important as the resolution. It'd be better to get a dimmer projector with a higher resolution. So if your viewing environment isn't totally dark, such as a room with windows and you don't have blackout curtains during the day, or you're outside where there may be street lights or a glowing moon, then you'll want to go with a brighter projector. But remember that cheap projectors are almost never as bright as they claim to be. And as far as resolution goes, I would typically pick a less bright projector with a higher resolution over a brighter projector with a lower resolution. You can always try to make your room darker, but you'll never be able to increase the resolution of your projector. I personally would never get a projector with a resolution below 720p, which is a resolution of 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. The reason for this is that you'll most likely be enlarging the video to about 9 feet across. And at that size, you can actually see the individual pixels on lower resolution projectors. I think a 1080p projector is about the highest resolution you'd need, as a 4K projector doesn't really add all that much to the picture quality for the much higher price you'd be paying. Here's a screenshot from a YouTube video that compares a 4K projector versus a 180p projector. It's being projected onto a wall, but even so, there's really not much difference between the quality. As far as sound goes, I would recommend an external speaker of some sort, as most projectors that I've come across under $500 do not have great sound quality. 
but I will say I was fairly impressed with the sound I got from the soda can sized Nebula capsule. You'll also want to consider if you'd like a portable projector that can run on batteries as opposed to a projector that has to be plugged into the wall. The portability of the smaller projectors is always nice, but keep in mind that the battery life is almost always under two hours, but it is not limited to running on the battery only. You can always plug it in for unlimited run time. As far as portable projectors go, I really like the AXA brand. The P300, P700, and M5 projectors have a fairly high resolution, nice colors, and good brightness. The Nebula capsule also produces a decent image with really good speaker, but it does have a lower resolution than the three AXA projectors. Alright everybody, thanks for your time. I hope you found this video informative, and if you think others would find it helpful, please click the thumbs up button, which makes it easier for them to find it. And also don't forget to click on the links for the Spandex projector screens below in the description, and check back for more projector comparison videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching.